they was making a video and they she was playing with the gun but it went off and hit him and as it hit him she dropped the gun and it fell and it went off stop jonathan stop jonathan now game over <laughs> Unfortunately, we see horrific murders get reported on the news and read about them online nearly every day. But very rarely do people get to witness these horrific acts as they unfold in real time. Welcome to Crime City. Today, we're going to dive into the most gruesome murders caught on live stream. Family members tell us a 12-year-old girl accidentally shot and killed her 14-year-old cousin. Police say the girl then died. This story begins in a pretty horrific way, with two teenage children and a firearm. The Harvey household was having a big party to celebrate the members of the family who were born in March. It's not unusual for these close-knit families to get together and celebrate with each other. But what was meant to be a celebration of life is about to take a very dark turn. Cousins, 12-year-old Paris Harvey and 14-year-old Quran Harvey, desperately wanted to go to a party with the young adults of the family. But their parents, who are siblings, both said no. They begged and begged their parents, and they eventually gave in, expecting they would be safe with their family. But little did they know. Everybody should have stuck with somebody. You know, we gotta look out for each other. We're family, and you know, they're young. On Friday, March 24th, 2022, Cousins Paris and Quran headed to downtown St. Louis to celebrate with family. As they enjoyed their time, no one kept a close eye on them as they were old enough to take care of themselves. Big mistake. They found a firearm laying around. They quickly grabbed it and headed to a bathroom together without catching anyone's attention. When they got to the bathroom, the cousins went live on Instagram and started playing with the weapon, attempting to reenact a rap video. 12-year-old Paris held the firearm to 14-year-old Quran's head while reading the comments on their live video. They were generating a lot of views, and this egged them on, but little did the cousins know that the firearm they were playing with was fully loaded. While Paris held the firearm on Quran's head, she accidentally set the gun off, hitting Quran in the head. Paris went immediately into shock and dropped the gun, which set it off again. As she bent down to pick up the firearm, she mistakenly grabbed it by the barrel, and the firearm went off again, striking her in the head. Both children were pronounced dead on the spot. Their family members were devastated, with Paris's mom wishing that the rest of the family kept an eye on her baby. The family, you know, they should have basically like made sure she was okay. At first, police thought the children had been arguing before the firearm went off, but the rest of the family called it a freak accident. They were playing with the gun when they shouldn't have been. Of course, they shouldn't have been doing it. I think it just went off. It went off by mistake. The first case was clearly an accident that unfortunately claimed two young lives. But this next case will send shockwaves down your spine. A lot of people these days want to be famous on social media. Among those people is Renita Williams, but Renita had no way of knowing the brutal way she would go viral on social media. Renita was a 27-year-old woman living in Shreveport, Louisiana. She was a mother to three children, Demaya, King, and Jada. Renita worked two jobs to provide for her kids. She was a hairdresser and an interior designer. Renita would often help her neighbors redesign their homes, and she was good at it. Her neighbors loved Renita and described her as smart and humble. Renita was also known for being outspoken. She was not afraid to speak her mind and would often go on Facebook to say exactly what was on her mind, which got her Facebook account blocked many times. Um, I apologize because I couldn't go, go live on my phone. My, pay, my, my phone, my page is... Her Facebook account was her way of reaching people, but little did she know that it would lead to her demise. An argument Renita had online would take a horrific turn when her ex-boyfriend, Jonathan Robinson, got involved. Renita and Jonathan met when Renita was in her early 20s, and Jonathan was in his 30s. At first, their relationship was going well. Jonathan showered her with gifts and was a good surrogate father to her kids. But their romance soon turned sour when Renita found out he was seeing other women, and he wasn't even trying to hide it. He would leave Renita alone to go spend time with his other women. Renita couldn't take it anymore. She decided to end things with Jonathan and move on with her life. But Jonathan wasn't about to let her go. After the breakup, Renita decided to get back out there and meet people. And at a birthday party for her brother, she met another man. He 
He was kind and calm, and unlike Jonathan, he didn't put his hands on her. Renita was immediately smitten with the new guy. A few months into their relationship, Renita decided to make things with her new man official online. While people were happy she was in a healthy relationship, Jonathan was seething with rage. He considered Renita his, and the idea that she was with someone else made his blood boil. Jonathan started to stalk Renita. He would text her constantly when she was out with her new man. He even showed up at a club Renita was hanging out at with her friends after he found out she was there through Facebook. Jonathan threatened and stalked Renita, clearly unable to let her go. Renita was tired of his behavior, so she went live on Facebook to blast Jonathan and tell him to leave her alone. Jonathan's new girlfriend happened to see the live and ended up getting into an argument with Renita. It went on for hours until Renita logged off. The next time Renita would go live would be the last. On April 12th, 2018, Jonathan showed up at Renita's house with one thing on his mind. Unfortunately for Renita, her life was about to be tragically cut short for all to see. When Jonathan showed up at Renita's home the first time, she asked him to leave and surprisingly he left. But just a few hours later, he returned. And this time, he had something else with him. Jonathan forced Renita to go live on Facebook to apologize to his girlfriend while pointing a rifle at her. She tried to go live, but her account was blocked, so she went live on her brother's phone. I'm, I apologize because I couldn't go go live on my phone. My page, my my phone, my page is blocked. I'm gonna make you famous. No. Everybody wanna be famous? Let's be famous today. Okay. Stop, Jonathan! Stop, Jonathan! Stop. Now. Game over. While this was going on, Renita's brother was able to get away and call the police. The police quickly arrived and surrounded the house, but Jonathan didn't stop until he accomplished the evil act he set out to commit. He fired at Renita multiple times and ended her. Then he tried to engage the police in a shootout, but ran out of bullets and was arrested. Jonathan was charged with first-degree murder and sentenced to 147 years in prison. This next case was so gruesome that most of the two-hour live stream has been scrubbed from the internet. In April 2022, police found a nude body of a woman in an abandoned car in front of an office building. The woman's body was so battered that the police were unable to identify her at first. Stripped, bound, and unable to escape. <laughs> Please. Money guy. Police say the woman in this video, which we've blurred, is Janice David. You can hear her begging for her life. No money guy. I started that night as a the woman was later identified as Janice David, a 34-year-old woman who lived in Louisiana. But the police didn't find Janice by accident. A Facebook user had contacted the police after he happened upon a Facebook Live of a man torturing a woman. The man immediately called the police, but it was too late for Janice. By the time the police found her, she was already dead. The culprit? A man who had just been arrested for car theft and was already in custody. The man, later identified as Earl Lee Johnson, is a 35-year-old man who also lived in Louisiana. Earl Lee and Janice reportedly went on a days-long substance binge. It's unclear what made Earl turn on Janice. It could simply be a narcotics-fueled rage. But Facebook users received the shock of their lives when they logged onto the app and came upon Earl Lee's live. He jumped her, he beat her, and he stabbed her. And then from there, he tried to set the car on fire. They watched him slowly torture Janice while she was bound, nude, and defenseless. He alternated between choking her, striking her, and stabbing her. Janice begged for her life constantly, but her pleas fell on deaf ears. Earl was either too high or too determined, but he sprouted incoherent sentences and was seen beating his chest as he took breaks between torturing Janice. Apparently they were involved in some, some drug usage together for a couple of days and as in result, as you uh, everyone has seen on Facebook Live, live is very gruesome, very, very evil act. 
some people from the live reported the video to Facebook while Facebook reported it to the police. The police did everything they could to find Janice, but by the time they narrowed down her location, Earl had completed his evil act on Janice and fled the scene. Earl Lee admitted the murder to the police and was arrested and charged with one count of first degree murder. When killers live stream their murders, it's an especially heinous act, but it's even more heinous when it involves the murder of a two-year-old little boy. On February 14th, 2017, little Avante was picked up by his uncle for a Valentine's Day ride around town, but they weren't alone. They also had his uncle's friend, who was a 20-year-old pregnant woman. As they rode through the city of Chicago, the woman live-streamed on Facebook, taking her viewers through their journey on that day. Unfortunately for the woman, she would capture a gruesome event she likely will never forget. As the Jolly Trio reached an alley in the 2300 block of South Kenneth Avenue at around 1.30 p.m., a car drove past them and a man got out of the car, but the trio didn't notice the man who seemed to be heading straight for them until it was too late. By the time they noticed the man, he had pulled out a firearm and aimed it at Levante and Lazaric. The woman was terrified, chills gripping her soul. She slowly opened the car door just in case it escalated. The man said a few words to Lazaric, and just as the woman thought, he opened fire on the car and the woman ran out screaming. She was pregnant and she had been hit on the stomach. She ran into a nearby house screaming for help. Her live stream went pitch black, but her piercing screams could still be heard. While still recording, the picture goes dark, but you can still hear her cries for help. The man was still firing at the car, not caring if he hit his target or anyone else in the vicinity. Chicago police reportedly said Levante White Jr. and the adult male were both shot in the head as they sat in a car and later died at the hospital. The police were eventually called to the scene, but by the time they got there, it was too late. Levante, his uncle, and the pregnant woman were rushed to the hospital. The doctors did everything they could for little Levante, but sadly, he succumbed to his injuries. His uncle also didn't make it. But the pregnant woman who had run for her life at the sight of trouble thankfully made it, and both her and the baby survived. The culprit? A man named Devon Swan, a 26-year-old man who had had several brushes with the law. Since 2008, Devon Swan had been convicted of crimes including unlawful use of a weapon, armed robbery, and substance possession. Only a year before he committed the horrifying crime that took the life of little Levante, Devon had been released on parole while serving time for possession and violating electronic monitoring. Devon Swan had been affiliated with gangs, and according to the police, so had Lazaric Collins. Little Levante had been caught in the crossfire. Devon was charged with first-degree murder of Levante and his uncle. Hey, thanks for watching. Which case haunts you the most? And do you know any other livestream murders you'd want me to cover? Comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe.